This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Mom charged with neglect of seven-year-old son found dead. A St. James woman who was taken into custody on Tuesday morning in connection with the death of her seven-year-old son has been charged with a child neglect and was remanded until July 6. The accused, the woman, 29-year-old Queen Anne Spence of Johnson Common in Picker's death, was charged in the afternoon and taken before the St. James Family Court following the death of her son Hayden Rose, a first grader of the community's primary and infant school. The police have also confirmed that Spence is also under investigation for the death of her six-month-old daughter last year. Reports by the Cambridge police are that an alarm was raised shortly after 8 a.m. on Tuesday after the child's body, which was in an advanced state of decomposition, was discovered outside his home. Detectives discovered the child lying face down in bushes in the banana field with what appeared to be a chop wound to the back of the head. Further investigation led to a blood-stained mattress in an upstairs room of the family house. The pain was palpable in Bicker's death Tuesday as the death marked a grim end to the commemoration of May as a child month. Residents in the community say they believe that young Hayden may have been killed late Sunday night and his body dumped at the location. A community member who told reporters that he was a close relative of both the mother and the child said he was angry at the manner of Hayden's death. The man lashed out at Spence, claiming that she had reported that she hadn't seen her son all night Monday, yet still retired to the comfort of her bed. Robert Gordon, principal of Bickersteth Primary and Infant School, said that the community convulsed in shock when news of the tragedy emerged. Gordon said that reports from Hayden's teacher indicated that he was a promising child with the potential of becoming an outstanding student. At this time, the school is in mourning. It is a very sad day for us at the school, said Gordon. We are trying our best to comfort the students, and a team of us will be going to the family home sometime today, Gordon stated. Two men gone down in Clarendon Bar Investigators are trying to identify a motive for the killing of two men in a Clarendon Bar Monday night. The dead men have been identified as a 31-year-old Keith Ming and a 58-year-old Carl Watt. They are both from Palmento Sandy Bay in Clarendon. According to the police's corporate communications unit, the men were closing the bar when gunmen drove up and began shooting. Both men were shot several times and were taken to hospital where they were pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. U.S. issues a travel advisory for some Jamaican parishes due to crime. Ahead of the summer tourist season, the United States on Tuesday issued a Level 3 travel advisory for Jamaica, which asked residents to reconsider traveling to the country due to crime. The advisory went to state that those who decide to visit the country should avoid areas in seven parishes. The parishes are Clarendon, Hanover, Kingston and St. Andrew, St. James, specifically Montego Bay and other areas, St. Anne, St. Catherine and Westmoreland. The statement listed some crimes that visitors may experience while visiting the country. Violent crimes such as home invasions, armed robberies, sexual assaults and homicides are common. Sexual assaults occur frequently, including at all-inclusive resorts. Local police lack the resources to respond effectively to serious criminal incidents, the advisory warned. Emergency services vary throughout the island, and response time may vary from U.S. standards. The homicide rate reported by the government of Jamaica has for several years been among the highest in the Western Hemisphere, it continued. The advisory stated that U.S. government personnel who are in the country are prohibited from traveling to certain areas in the parishes listed. They were also cautioned not to use public buses and to avoid driving outside of prescribed areas of Kingston at night. Fire destroys a JUTC bus in Bull Bay, St. Andrew. Fire destroyed a Jamaican Urban Transit Company bus in Bull Bay, St. Andrew yesterday afternoon. JUTC's corporate communications manager, Cecil Toms, said while passengers were on the bus, no one was injured by the fire that broke out on the unit around 5 p.m. The source of the blaze is yet to be determined. The Jamaica Fire Brigade confirmed the incident but said it had no further details. 
Meanwhile, the JUTC is to launch a public awareness campaign against the bus of vandalism today. Toms said in the past, drivers and the passengers have been impacted by glass splinters entering their eyes as a result of attacks on the buses. In 2019, the JUTC recorded about 90 cases of vandalism. He also said that damage to the buses, whether by fires or attacks, negatively impacted the quality of service provided to the public. He said the JUTC has an ongoing fleet of about 250 buses. We encourage persons to protect the JUTC buses and do not damage them because what it will mean is a lot of inconvenience for persons who wish to take a ride or in fact even longer waiting hours when somebody needs to get to a specific location, Toms said. Jamaica High Risk for COVID-19 U.S. Warns Citizens the United States has added Jamaica to its list of high-risk countries for COVID-19. In an announcement yesterday, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warned Americans to avoid travel to Jamaica if they are not up to date with their COVID-19 vaccines. Jamaica is now on the CDC's Level 3, up from Level 2 to which the country was downgraded in December. On May 18, Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton confirmed that Jamaica was experiencing a fifth wave of COVID-19. Tufton said the wave is likely due to the highly transmissible Omicron subvariant BA2, which is present in the population. The U.S. decision could be a major blow to the recovering tourism industry, as America is a major source of market for visitors. For the last 24 hours, Jamaica confirmed 190 cases with a positivity rate of 32.1%. Hospitalizations have also been climbing and stood at 124 for the period. Phillips accuses government of mishandling Jamaica's affairs. Manchester Northwestern Member of Parliament Michael Phillips has accused that the Jamaica Labour Party led the government of continuously mishandling the country's affairs, which he said has directly affected the poor. Phillips is speaking at the People's National Party. Knock Patrick Divisional Conference in Midday Manchester on Sunday cited political bias as undermining Jamaica's growth and development. Phillips also urged that the government has failed to adequately contribute to development efforts in parishes outside of Kingston and St. James, claiming that he has not seen any development in some parishes over the past four years. If the government's only solution in dealing with the suffering that is happening now is by giving a taxi driver a little $25,000 voucher, giving out two food packages, then we are in for a rough ride. When I look at the roads, they are the worst that they have ever been, stated the only sitting PNP MP in Manchester. Further, Phillips accused the government of lacking a plan for solid waste management and sanitation. With $1.8 billion budgeted in the 2022-2023 estimates of expenditure, to procure 50 compactor trucks to improve a garbage collection on the island, Phillips described it as an embarrassment to the people of Jamaica. I have never seen the amount of garbage that I am seeing right across the country now. 50 garbage trucks cannot fix the problem that we are seeing now, and it just shows the arrogance of this government. When the Minister of Local Government can stand up in Parliament and tell people that they're nasty, him out of order. The National Housing Trust yet again came under scrutiny from Phillips, who said the government has seemingly forgotten why the organization was created. Andrew Holness is behaving as if his hands are clean. When I hear what's going on at NHD right now, Michael Manley is supposed to be turning in his grave. Less than 50% of the persons who contribute to NHD can't get a benefit, and the majority of people who contribute to NHD are poor people who are work but them can't get a house. The policy document commissioned by the Prime Minister says the NHD needs to build 15,000 new houses per year, and the NHD delivery is under 4,000 houses per year. Phillips wants the Integrity Commission and the Auditor General's Department to access the Guaranteed Purchase Program, which is a partnership between the National Housing Trust and the developers, where the agency agrees to purchase for its contributors all or portions of units in housing developments done by private or public real estate developers. U Tech proposes a psychological evaluation for teachers under JTC bill. The University of Technology has suggested psychological evaluation as part of the process of determining the fitness of persons as educators under the Jamaica Teaching Council bill. 
making its presentation to the Joint Parliamentary Committee reviewing the JTC bill on Tuesday, the university noted that there are technical and other requirements for becoming registered and licensed as a teacher. However, UTEC Professor Sherman Barrett said the fitness to teach criterion is too limited. In interrogating the fitness to teach criterion as cited on page four in the bill, we question the scope and limitations on the definition. We believe that clarification is needed on whether fitness is based on the technicist approach in which competency and skill are the primary consideration or whether consideration is given to other criteria such as psychological evaluation, mental readiness, and medical fitness to teach. Given especially what is happening now within the, the society and being teacher educators ourselves, we believe that competence is not just about technical competence. We need to give attention to those dimensions of the readiness of a teacher to engage with students in, this, in the psychological space. These days, in education, we are pushing a lot in the psychosocial aspect of how teachers relate to students. And we believe that within the Jamaican environment, this is absolutely critical as we look at increased violence in schools. Section 24, Part 1 of the Act stipulates that a person shall not practice as a teacher unless A, the person is a licensed teacher, or B, the person is an instructor. We acknowledge that this stipulation is necessary for the upgrading of the teaching profession, but we question what provisions have been contemplated for the possible teacher shortage in some subject areas like mathematics and sciences, which provisions will most likely exacerbate set against the background of teacher migration and a presumed shortage of qualified STEM teachers. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.